Hello class welcome to connected In today's session we will study about the chapter of democratic rights and learn the basics of it So without any further ado let's get started students in the previous two chapters we have learned about two major elements of democratic government and today we will see how elections and institutions must be combined with another important part called the enjoyment of rights to make a government democratic even the leaders elected through a renowned institutional process must not cross the limits these limits in democracy are set by democratic rights of the citizens In this final chapter we will gain knowledge about democratic rights and how it is exercised in real life. First let's see what these rights mean and why we need them. We will study the fundamental rights one by one and then move on to how these rights are implemented on the citizens of the country. Secondly, we will see who protects and enforces them and at last we will end with how these scopes of rights are expanding. As you guys can see there is an exercise at the beginning of the chapter let's not worry about it and move on with the chapter first children did you know about 600 people were picked up secretly by the us forces from all over the world and put in a prison in guantanamo bay Guantanamo Bay is area near Cuba controlled by American Navy Jamal Al Banna and his father was there too. The US government accused them of being the enemies of the US and linked the, to the terror attack of 9/11. Generally the government and the person's country are not informed about the imprisonment by US. The family members of the person accused came to know about this incident through media. families media or even un representatives were prevented from meeting the accused the us government arrested them and interrogated them there were no trial nor was the accused allowed to approach the court amnesty international is the organization of human rights this organization gained information about the prisoners of guantanamo bay and reported that the prisoners were harassed and tortured by the us the prisoners were not given proper treatments which they must get according to international treaties many prisoners protested against the system by going on hunger strikes prisoners who were proven guilty were not released by the us intentionally Even the US refused the orders of the UN to close the prison in Guantanamo Bay. Now let's study the citizens rights in Guantanamo Bay. The case of Guantanamo Bay is different because the government of one country denied the basic rights of the citizens of another country. Let's check the facts about the citizens of Saudi Arabia based on their rights. The people of the country have no right in electing or changing rulers. The country is governed by an hereditary king which means after a king dies his son or a person of his person would ascend the throne. The king was both the executive and legislative powers. He has the power to exercise the rules of the country. He appoints ministers, judges and can make changes in their decisions. Formation of political parties is forbidden and the media cannot report any kind of information that is disliked by the king. People of this country do not have religious rights. The citizens need to be a Muslim to stay in this country freely. Non-Muslim residents cannot openly follow their religion. Women are not given proper rights. Various types of restrictions are implemented on them. In Saudi Arabia the testimony of one man is equal to two women. Besides Saudi Arabia there are various countries that follow and imply these restrictions among their citizens. Another example of exploitation of human rights is ethnic massacre in Kosovo. 
You may assume that exploitation of human rights can be done only in complete monarchies and not in countries with elective democracy. But students, you are absolutely wrong and one of those examples is ethnic massacre of Kosovo. Kosovo was a province in Yugoslavia before partition and the population of this province was mostly ethnic Albanian. But the country had a major population of Serb. After a Serb was elected as a ruler, he wanted the Serb to get the most priority. The other ethnic groups were looked down upon. Those Serb leaders either wanted the ethnic groups to accept the dominance or leave the country. A tragic incident happened to an Albanian family in a town in Kosovo in April 1999. One of the people of an Albanian family reported that she and her husband were sitting in a room and suddenly the troops crashed open their door and killed her husband. The wedding ring of the woman was taken and the woman was asked to leave the house. The troops then burned her house down. At last, she was left with no family, house or possessions. In the same way, hundreds and thousands of Albanians were tortured and left in misery by the troops of their own country, who functioned under the leadership of the elected member. This massacre is one of the biggest exploitation of human rights. After some time, several other countries interfered in this matter to stop it and the ruler lost his power. The ruler then went through several trials by the International Court of Justice under crime and humiliation are under against humanity. Let's move on to the part of rights and democracy. Students, if you were in the same situation as these people during the massacre of Kosovo or prisoners of the Guantanamo Bay, what would you do? So students, here comes the concept of what constructs a democracy. The main thing that builds a democracy is the rights of the people in it. A person always going to least expect for justice, security and a basic amount of dignity for himself. For example, if you are pointed out as a criminal, the one thing you would want is a chance for you to prove yourself innocent. But there should always be a limitation because you cannot get everything you asked for. A person has to be reasonable about his demands as they would be applicable for each individual. So rights are a minimal thing that is always guaranteed to each person in a democracy in spite variation in caste, money or power. Do you guys know what are rights? Then let's see what it is. Rights are claims that a person can make over and the person, society or the government. Every person wants to live happily in their own way. This is what the rights provide to a person. Rights give us the power to claim as equally as others. Neither does rights allow you to harm others nor does it allow someone else to hurt you. It doesn't allow you to play a game by breaking the neighbor's window. Rights can only help you make reasonable claims without causing damage to anyone or anything. The most important criteria about claiming rights are respecting others' rights too. Just by claiming something, it does not give us the right. A claim must be recognized by the society equally among all and also should be reasonable. Rights acquired meaning in a society. Every society has certain rules to decide what is right and wrong. The rules that are rightful comes as rights to people. This is the reason why rights change from time to time and society to society. Socially recognized claims are really acknowledged when they are enforced into law else they remain as moral rights of people. The people of Guantanamo Bay had a moral claim to not be tortured, but they were unable to go to anyone to claim them. The law recognizes such claims and then they are enforced. After enforcement, these rights are available for all. When rights are exploited by the citizens or government, it is called infringement of law. People can approach the court for the protection of their rights. To enforce a claim to a right, it must be reasonable, recognized by the society and approved by the law. Now let's start with the need of rights in a democracy. Well, rights are a crucial part of democracy. In every democracy, every citizen should have the right to express their opinion through vote. 
every individual of a democracy should exercise their right through vote. They have the right to choose or remove the representative who would go on on them. People of a country should have the right to form parties and participate in political events. The very basic need of rights is to prevent minorities from being oppressed. Rights prevent the majority population from exploiting and humiliating the minorities. When things go wrong, rights guarantee you to provide justice for the same. When majority of the population oppresses the minority, it is the duty of the government to protect their citizens' rights. Do you know sometimes the government refuses to protect the citizens' rights? Well, that's the reason why some rights are kept above the government, so they will be unable to violate them. Democracies protect their human rights by writing it down in a constitution. India is one of the largest democracies in the world. The rights of citizens are protected in India by writing it down on the constitution. Special status is given to the rights that are fundamental and important in our daily lives. These rights are termed as fundamental rights. In chapter 2 we have read about the preamble and how it secures equality, justice and liberty of the common people of India. Well, fundamental rights are an important feature of the constitution that comes to put into this effect. You have already read the six fundamental rights of the constitution. Let's recall them. Let's start with the right to equality. According to this right, the Constitution of India should look on every citizen of India equally, irrespective of caste, creed, color, money. Every person is the same in front of law. Every law of the country is the same for every individual. This is called the rule of law. Rule of law states the foundation of a democracy. It states that every person is the same in front of law whether it is a political leader, government citizen or a normal citizen. From the prime minister to a person living in the rural area, every person is subjected to the same law and its consequences. No one should be provided with privileges in front of the law if he claims to be an important person. Do you know a prime minister who was accused of cheating had to go through all the legal procedures like any other common citizen? No privileges or special treatments were provided to him. Right to equality also implicates that government shall not discriminate the citizen based on religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth. Every person has the right to access the public shops or restaurants. hotels and cinema halls there should be no restriction in using public commodities parks bathing goods tanks maintained by the government should be available for all the general public equally in our country like india where discrimination occurs it was essential to incorporate these rights in the constitution right to equality is also implemented for public jobs People should be given equal opportunities in the different fields of job. A person should not be discriminated for employment on the basis of caste, creed or religion. Government provides special rights for the poor backward people. In chapter 4 we have already read the people of scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and other backward classes have reserved seats in the parliament. Various other governments have reserved different such jobs for the poor and the physically challenged people. After hearing this you may feel that these rights are against the right to equality well absolutely not equality does not mean giving the same treatment to all irrespective of their need it actually means giving equal opportunity to what every person is capable of job reservations just provide equal opportunities to all the constitution also says that this type of reservation does not violate the rights The constitution also directs the government to end social discriminations like practice of untouchability. Untouchability does not mean refusal to touch a person, but it actually means any practice of citizens to look down upon underprivileged citizens with certain caste. Such people are prevented from accessing public commodities and public places. So the constitution has implemented it as a punishable offense. 
द सेकेंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट राइट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज द राइट टू फ्रीडम दिस राइट अलाउस अ पर्सन टू डू फ्रीली वॉट एवर दे वॉन्ट विदाउट कॉसिंग एनी डैमेज टू अदर्स इट मीन्स नो अदर पर्सन कैन इंटरफियर इन सम अदर पर्सनस मैटर नो वन हैज द राइट टू डिक्टेट ऑन वॉट वी शुड डू एंड वॉट नॉट अंडर दिस कैटेगरी ऑफ राइट्स कॉमन पीपल हैव द राइट टू फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एंड एक्सप्रेशन assembly in a peaceful manner form association and unions move freely throughout the country reside in any part of the country practice any profession or to carry any occupation students you should always remember that every citizen has the right to all these freedoms you cannot exercise it so that it violates other people's rights to freedom government can implement reasonable restrictions in our freedom for the larger interest of society one of the essential features of this freedom is freedom of speech and expression it allows citizens to freely communicate among them every individual thought should be respected even if your thought differs from rest it should be given equal value as others according to this freedom a person has a complete right to speak against or for the political party his or her speech must not be neglected one can have the right to share the views through pamphlets magazines newspapers or through paintings poetry and songs this freedom does not give us the right to create violence or instigate anger among people to rebel against the ruling party no one can misuse this right to malign others by making false news citizens have the complete right to hold meetings and rallies on any kind of issue under the right of freedom one can exchange thoughts gather people get public support on a certain topic ask votes for elections These types of meetings need to be peaceful and must not intervene in the peace of others' lives. Weapons are not allowed in such rallies or meetings. Suppose a group of workers may form an association to keep their interest. Some people if they want may join them to campaign against various issues like pollution or corruption. A person has the freedom to travel to any part of the country by his or her own wish. Inside India we are free to travel and reside in any place we want. A person from Assam who has no roots in Hyderabad can set up a business there. People from different villages towns move to cities and settle there for occupation. This is what this freedom allows us. No one can prevent us from doing so. Even women and underprivileged groups should be allowed to do whatever occupation they wish for. No one is deprived of life or liberty as asserted by law. No one can be killed unless the court orders so. Even a police or government cannot arrest someone without proper legal justification. Before arresting some procedures must be followed. The person who is arrested must be informed with the reasons for arrest. Within 24 hours of arrest, the arrested or detained must be produced in front of the nearest magistrate. The arrested has the right to consult a lawyer for his or her defense. After the grant of right to equality and liberty, it was necessary to enforce a right against exploitation. It was implemented to prevent exploitation of the poor and the weak sections of the society. The constitution mentioned three different threats that cause exploitation among weaker sections of people. First is the prohibition of traffic of human beings. Trafficking involves buying and selling of humans for unethical purposes. Second is the prohibition of forced labor or beggar. Beggar is a purpose where people or workers are made to work free of cost or very less remuneration for their masters. This practice may occur on a long-term basis which is called bonded labor. The final one is child labor. Child labor is an illegal offense which is practiced in various parts of the country. It is directed by the constitution that no one can use a child below the age of 14 to work in a factory, mine or any kind of harmful work. This law prohibits the employment of children in factories like BD factories, printing or dyeing. Right to religion is also another part of right to freedom. We have already studied that India is a secular state which means most people in India follow different religions. 
while some people don't believe in religions secularism defines the relation between human beings irrespective of the religion they follow a secular country does not have a official religion under this right every religion has equal value all the judgments made for an individual or group should be done irrespective of their religion In a secular country every person is given the right practice or to profess and propagate his or her religion every person or religious group has the complete right to manage its religious affairs but no one can compel the other person to convert his or her religion to another by using means of fraud and force every person is free to change religion on his or own wish No one is free to do anything that they want in the name of religion. For example, it is illegal to use animals or human beings for religious purposes. Religious practices that exploit women are prohibited in this right. For example, one cannot force a widow to shave hair or wear white clothes. A secular state does not favor a particular religion, not a person is exploited on the basis of a religion. A person cannot be forced to pay taxes for maintenance and promotion of a religious institution or religion. Government educational institution should not be forced to take part in religious worship or religious instructions. Do you know why the constitution provides written guarantees for the minority and no special rights are given to the majority? It is because democracy gives power to the majority. The minorities get neglected and exploited by the religious belief and culture of the majority. As the minorities are an equally important part of the population, the rights of minorities must be protected. Let's see what are the cultural and educational rights given to them. Every individual section of people with distinct language has the right to conserve it. Admission to any educational institution must not be denied based on religion or caste or language. Every minority has a right to establish and administer educational institutions of their own choice. The minority word used here does not only mean religious minority at any national level. In some states people speaking a certain language are a minority but in a different state it's a majority. For example, Telugu speaking people are a majority in Andhra Pradesh but a major minority in Karnataka. In the same way Punjabis are a majority in Punjab but a minority in Haryana, Delhi and Rajasthan. So now as you have learned about fundamental rights, you need a basic knowledge how it is applicable for us. These fundamental rights are enforceable to each citizen of India. That's what makes it so important. Even in our constitution we have a law named right to constitution remedies which ensures that everybody can seek their rights properly if we put it as an example we can see there are many ways our rights can be violated a person a private organization or even government can interfere with one's rights in a case like that one can seek justice from court This right is the soul of our constitution as it allows each citizen to gain their remedy if their rights are violated. Any government authority, legislation or executive cannot interfere with the fundamental rights. Any law which can compromise these laws are stated as invalid. Even if there is a legislation in existence that violates our rights, one can challenge them in court. The court has the power to issue orders or right if they find something or someone is violating the rights. Court can hold them responsible and citizens can be compensated. In chapter 5 we have already read that the judiciary in our country is powerful and independent of the government and parliament. It protects the rights of the citizens in any case. A person whose rights are violated can go to the court for justice. This is called as public interest litigation PIL. Under this a citizen can appro- has the right to approach a court like the supreme court or high court for the protection of their public interest against some law of the government. The judge takes up the matter only if it is of public interest. We have almost come to the end of this chapter. Let's learn about the last topic that is expanding scope of rights. We began this chapter with the significance of fundamental rights and the rest we read about is rights. 
you may get an idea that fundamental rights are the only rights citizens have. But there are several other rights in the constitution that are based on this. A range of laws expanded through all these years. Sometimes new rights are made for the citizens that they can enjoy. Even the court gives judgment for the expansion of rights. Some rights like freedom of press, right to information and right to education are derived from the fundamental rights. As education has become compulsory for children up to the age of 14 years, Parliament has enacted a law that gives the right to information to citizens. This law was based on the fundamental right to freedom of thought and expression. The Supreme Court has expanded the right to life to the right of food. The Supreme Court has implemented many more rights that are not the fundamental rights like the voting and right to property. Both of these rights are constitutional rights. There are several claims that are not enacted as laws because they are not rights by definition as we already read. With the increase in democracy, the government is also pressurized by these claims. Various international convents have contributed to the expansion of the laws. As a result, the scope of rights are evolving with time. With the emergence of new society, new constitutions are being made. Let's discuss some of the new rights of the Constitution of South Africa. The privacy of the citizens cannot be breached, right to a clean and healthy environment, access to proper housing and access to medical services, food and water. Do you students feel these rights must be implemented in India? Do give it a thought. Students, it's time for some fun exercises. How many fundamental rights are there in the Constitution of India? Name the different fundamental rights in the Constitution of India. In which year did the ethnic massacre in Kosovo happen? Ban on human trafficking is based on which fundamental right? What is infringement of law? Time's up, students. Let's discuss the answers now. There are six fundamental rights in the Constitution of India. The five fundamental rights are right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, cultural and educational rights, right to constitutional remedies. The ethnic massacre of Kosovo happened in April 1999. Ban on human trafficking is based on rights against exploitation. When rights are exploited by the citizen or government, it is called as infringement of law. So now we have come to the end of today's class. I hope you all enjoyed as well as learned many new things. See you all in the next class. Thank you.